In this video, I'm going to answer the simple question of what is row echelon form? And to do this, we're going to look at the fundamentals of row echelon form. And really, there are two basic rules that we need to use to determine whether a matrix is in row echelon form or not. And the two simple rules are, firstly, all rows of zeros must be at the bottom. So if you have any rows that are entirely made up of zeros, they must be below any rows that have non-zero elements. Then we can look at some examples. Here is an example of a matrix that is in row echelon form, partly because it satisfies the first rule. This one on the other side, however, is not in row echelon form because you've got a row that's entirely made up of zeros that is not at the bottom of the matrix. So that's one of the first criteria. The second criteria is a little bit more complicated, but I'll show you an example of a case which is row echelon form and a case that's not, and it'll make much more sense with the example. So when you have row echelon form, you have a staircase pattern of first non-zero entries in each row. Or in other words, the non-zero entries in each row are to the right of the one above. So if we look at this matrix here, this matrix is in row echelon form, and we can draw on the circles to show the first non-zero entries. So these will be called pivots. We can then draw on the staircase pattern, and we can see that looks sort of like a staircase. The other th way to think about it is we have a non-zero entry here, or a pivot, and then we look below, and the pivot is to the right of it. It's not directly below it, it's not to the left, it is to the right. So we have a pivot here, and then the next one is to the right. So this is satisfying the second rule for row echelon form, and we have a row of all zeros, and that row is at the bottom. You don't have to have all zeros on the bottom, but if you do, it must be at the bottom of the matrix. This one, however, is not in row echelon form. So we've got the first entries. So we've got these two, which look okay, but then we've got one immediately below. This is not to the right of the one above. So that is not satisfying the condition. And then we've got the last one there and we draw on the staircase pattern. You're getting this big drop here. And so this isn't showing that nice staircase pattern and it's not satisfying the rule of the non-zero entries being to the right of the one above. So this one is not row echelon form. So you can now hopefully look at a matrix and tell whether it's in row echelon form or not. So that's the first step. Then we need to think about what is the actual point of row echelon form? Why do we bother putting matrices in this form? And there's a number of reasons. I'll go through the main ones. It's because it actually tells you quite interesting things about the matrix. This matrix is in row echelon form. We can see a row of all zeros at the bottom. And then we can see a staircase pattern where all of the non-zero elements are to the right of the one above. So we can say some various things about the matrix. So the pivots are the first non-zero entry in each row. So if you want to identify the pivots, you can do that very quickly. You just go across each row and highlight the first non-zero element. You've got your pivots. Pivot columns, unsurprisingly, are the columns with pivots. And so you can immediately detect and identify all of your pivot columns. The next thing is that the rank which tells you the dimension of a vector space is simply equal to the number of pivots. So we can look how many pivots we've got here. I've circled them. We've got three. So you know the rank is three. And you can tell that immediately just by looking at it. The next thing I want to do is show you an example of how you can actually put a matrix into row echelon form. So here we've got a matrix that's obviously not in row echelon form. We have to do something to it. So we have to identify where we have to target. So the first one is I'd want to get that one to become a zero. And what you do to put a matrix into row echelon form is you just do row operations. So you look at that one and you think about what sort of combination of, of rows could you use to turn that into a one. So what I'm going to do is that row two, the second row, is just going to be row two minus row one. So we've got a blank there. So we're doing row two minus row one. So we've got one minus one, which is zero. Then minus one minus minus two, that gives one. And then two minus one is giving one. We then need to look again at this and think, where do we need to go next? So we are wanting to get a zero here. So that minus two has got to go. And we can do that by making row three become row three plus two row two. So let's blank out row three for a second. So we're doing row three plus 
two times row two. So we've got uh, minus two plus two times one. Again, the first is just going to be zero. Then we get the zero as desired. And then two plus two times one, that gives us four. And this matrix is now in our row echelon form as desired. And we've got our pivots on there. So we could identify it. We know our pivot columns and we know the rank of the matrix. And we've got our staircase pattern as well. So this is an introduction to what row echelon form is. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And finally, thank you very much for watching.